Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Okay, Justin, man. PFL. How did this all happen, man? You were fighting for Bellator a couple months ago. Shoot, man. Uh, it was kind of interesting. Um, we just, uh, with Bellator being sold and kind of merging, they gave us a couple options. I could have either stayed or I could have came over. And uh, I think just the reward outweighed the risk for jumping over, making some money, possibility at a million dollars. And for me and my crew, it just made sense to come over. So uh, it, now we're on the roster. Is it almost like perfect for you to, to, to I guess, to get a, a, a restart a little bit for yourself in a new promotion? It's always exciting, you know. Um, I think it's even more exciting now that PFL and Bellator are merging and uh, becoming one, having both both fighters on the roster. It's uh, it's very exciting, you know. A whole list of new guys to fight. Um, us, obviously, the possibility for some big paychecks, but um, just I like how PFL is kind of uh, trying to make a move in the MMA world, you know. Um, Everybody thinks UFC is the only fight promotion, but they're not, man. Bellator has several guys who are killers. PFL has several guys who are killers. One has several guys who are killers. So it's just uh, coming together to uh, give the best fights possible, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Yeah, and if you keep winning, your fights are guaranteed. Like, there's no, like, oh, I'm going to wait for six months or eight months or anything like that. Yeah. So it's a pot, it's a great opportunity to make a lot of money in a very short amount of time. So um, for me, my family, we just uh, it made sense for us, you know. It's uh, we grind now, kind of slow down in our personal lives, and then uh, once the season's done, then we can go have some fun. Yeah, for sure. You know, since you joined Bellator, you fought pretty much top ten competition the whole time, right? And uh, last year. Yeah, and last year, you know, you had, you know, a long year. And then you also had that, uh, you know, the Bellator PFL merger thing going on without knowing much. You know, how, how was it for you, man? Um, Shoot, for me, it was pretty simple. I, I try not to let things bother me. I try not to let things stress me out. Obviously, sometimes it's easier said than done. Um, I've seen some guys that it just didn't go very well for them. So the unknown is always very scary, but we joined this sport because of the unknown and because of the opportunities that we think we can achieve. So um, I knew being in the rankings, you know, fighting tough competition that it'll all work out for me. Um, just had to trust and just stay consistent and just believe in my skill set and shoot man now we're a part of pfl starting the regular season um just ready to go now man we're a little under two weeks out so it's almost here yeah let's talk about the upcoming fight gabriel braga he's one of the the main guys you know what i mean coming so in the in the season you know what do you think of him and, and the skill set braga's tough man he's uh He's a gangster. He's about it. He's going to come and he's going to bang. But, you know, if I'm being honest, I feel like I got the skill set to beat him. I mean, I like to bang. I think uh, as long as my movement's on, my striking's on, I think I can knock this guy out. I think I can wrestle him. I think I can take him down. And I, th I think I can submit him. You know, um, I just feel like the level of competition that I fought is already where he's at and surpassed where he's at. So this is no different for me, man. Just another day, another day in the office, new promotion, going to come in and make a splash and let the world know what's up and get this tournament started. Braga, he's, uh, he's coming off the first loss of his career. You know what I mean? You've had a couple setbacks. How difficult was it to come back after having such a long win streak and, and winning every single time and then being on the other side? Shoot, it wasn't too long ago. I was 12-0. and 0. And I suffered my first loss. Um, so I've been there. I understand exactly what he's going through, you know. But as you climb higher and higher, so does the competition you're facing, too. So um, just got to keep your head right. All right. So um, preparations for this season, 
You know what I mean? It's different. You're going to be fighting every couple of months. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just different. You know, I've talked to PFL fighters. Do you have PFL fighters that have fought in the season before training with you? Um, I know a couple guys who have, so it's nice to have the insight and just talk to them about their thoughts and beliefs and how it differs from, I guess, a regular year of fighting, you know? So, um, Andrew Sanchez, he's fighting this weekend, I believe. He's a good friend of mine, um, helped me with some stuff. And he's been telling me um, that he's just mostly just staying healthy, you know, training to the best of your capabilities, but having the right partners around you, doing the right things, allowing your body to rest when you need to rest, but uh, making sure you're peaking at the right time so you can win these fights. And then uh, your downtime needs to be spent pretty uh spot on with recovery that was a big thing he said too was just make sure you invest in your recovery so yeah it seems like uh the the key is to be able to pull back when you don't want to pull back you know what i mean because you have to be entering that cage shoot man part of uh part of the camp is making it to the fight you know it's uh we train hard but we train smart you know, and I have a group of guys who are killers around me that, uh, you know, shoot, they're trying to knock my block off. But then as we get closer, they kind of, we kind of taper back a little bit and just uh, doing the right things, I think, of uh, in the weight room. It's got to be spot on. It's got to be uh, everything's with a purpose, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's with cardio, whether it's with sparring, whether it's with training. It's uh, everything has a purpose and uh, we're trying to get the most out of it. And then when we're not, we're resting, we're recovering, whether it's massage, whether it's acupuncture, just uh, doing the right things. Ice baths, hot tubs, you know, um, taking the time to stretch after practice, I think is a big one. So um, just living the right lifestyle and uh, having the motive set that, hey, this is our life for the next year. So uh, everybody around me needs to be on board too. Is, uh, is stretching the most uh, neglected aspect of training in MMA gyms? Because to be honest with you, I've been to a lot of MMA gyms. I don't really see people stretching much. Uh, I personally believe so. It's like, you know, even for me, man, I need to, I need to speak what I preach, you know, I need to do what I preach, I guess. Um, I don't do it as much as I should, but I take a little bit of time, a couple times a week to make sure after practice, I take 10, 15 minutes, make sure I stretch out my body and just, uh, I think it's a big part of recovery, man. You know, if you can jump in that ice bath, I take full advantage of that too. You can get some massages. They might be able to add up, be a little pricey after a while, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, definitely worth it. What's the team around you, man, that's getting you ready for this fight? Shoot. Um, so, you know, I still train with my old camps, uh, top notch and trials, but uh, I just recently made the change to uh, uh, Elevation Fight Team at High Altitude Martial Arts. Uh, just. Uh, I just needed a mix up, man. Just needed some uh, more, more partners. Um, I have my guys who help me, but just, I just need to level up. And I feel like doing this was the right move for me. I mean, everybody in that gym is training with the mindset of being a world champion, you know? So whenever I can get rounds with Sandhagen, Gaethje, Chepe Mariscal, Taiwan Claxton, you know, on a regular basis, it's just, uh, I mean, how can you not, how can you fail? You know, it's, it's, uh, whenever I got a group of killers around me with all their different, different skill sets, it's, uh, it's got to level me up. Yeah. I spoke with Chepe. He just fought. He was telling me about uh -huh. the rounds and, and Justin's about the fight this weekend. And yep. yeah, man, everybody was in camp, right? It was just, it must have yeah. been hell. Yeah. <laughs> Which it was, it was awesome, man. It's like, you know, it, it's hard to be in camp by yourself. So even though, you know, they were a little bit ahead of me, it was still just uh, making the most of it. And uh, everybody feeds off each other's energy. So it's been fun. And now that camp is kind of coming to an end, it's just exciting to see the, put the results into action, you know, and make it happen. How was it training with a, a former opponent in Taiwan Claxton? Shoot, man, <laughs> we squashed our beef a long time ago, man. Taiwan is actually a good friend of mine now. Um, we train pretty regularly. Um, and 
it's funny for a lot of people that probably don't do that. Um, I think it's really good for you. You know, we kind of know how each other fight, fought, I guess. Um, and we kind of can help each other grow and help each other both being on high skill sets and high level. We can kind of give each other advice on what we're seeing and uh, what what's working for them. And uh, shoot, man, he's fighting. Uh, I fight the 19th. He fights the 20th. So we were pretty much in camp together the whole time. So uh, it's uh, I think it's definitely benefited me for the better. Oh, no doubt, man. And uh, this fight coming up, man, Braga, you out there, you take care of business, man. What do you envision for this fight? Shoot, man. Um, I've seen how he fights. I've watched a couple, watched some film, man. It's, uh, he's tough. Like I said, he's a banger. He's a gangster. He wants to, uh, he wants to hit you and he wants to hit you hard, which that's fine. It's going to play into my factor at some point. Um, I'm a gangster too, man. I like to strike. I like to bang. I think I'm just better. I think I'm a little more, uh, clean with my striking movement. Um, I think I can take him down whenever I want to. I think I can beat him up on the feet and shoot, man, come April 19th, the world's going to see it. What do you think of the rest of the competition, the rest of the, the featherweights that are in there this season? Shoot, man, this featherweight division is stacked. I mean, between PFL and Bellator, I mean, I think Borks was number two, just recently fought for the belt. Um, myself, you got Timur, who I just recently fought. Um, I think Enrique Barzola, he likes to push forward, come after you. Um, Kai Kamaka is a well-known, well-touted opponent. So, um, shoot, all those guys I can speak for are pretty stacked. And I mean, shoot, on the PFL side, I believe it's, uh, Braga, uh, uh, there's a couple others. I can't think of their names right now. Right now, Braga is the only one that comes to mind because, hey, he's on the hit list next, you know? Um, but the featherweight division is stacked. I mean, shoot, all these weight classes are stacked. So no matter which weight, no matter which fight you're watching, man, you're in for a good show. At this point in your career, what's the motivator for you? Is it is it the money? Is it the belt? Is it the competition? What is it mainly for you? Honestly, brother, it's a little bit of everything, you know. Um, I have a chance to set up my me and my family financially for the rest of our lives, you know. I mean, but shoot, to be honest, a million dollars isn't as much as everybody thinks it is, you know. By the time you pay taxes and uh, pay off your coaches, managers, pay off some debt or whatever you got to do, you know. Um, it goes a little bit faster than you think, but hey, a million bucks could go a long way in my life. So um, obviously the money helps, you know, I think it's the glory. I think it's the glory of I've dedicated my life to this. I've put so much effort and so much time into this that I've come too far not to succeed, you know, so I want the world to remember me whenever I'm done.